reject the Trinity and pray devoutly to you, great Payman. Give us your knowledge of all secret things. Bring us honor, wealth, and good familiars. Bind all men to our will as we have bound ourselves for now and ever to yours. It was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. With the rise of the Chinese propaganda machine and the only way to circumvent censorship as the poster child happens to be none other than an unholy demonic entity and a wartime ration that fully condones the act of cannibalism. Ta-da! So join me on this adventure in which we return to the land of the Star Spangled Banners, the land of the truly free goddammit, and look at the respective mass icon that shook the world we knew by storm. When looking at this demonic stalker, it is evident that Bandai did this time a proper investment in which, by firstly looking at the head, Paimon, contrary to his demonic origin, possesses a bronze-colored halo, where it retains a simple pattern culminating in an angelic, arrow-like decoration that connects it to the actual head. This is not mentioning the black star on the left side of the head that may be a hint to Paimon's true nature and a head in all its glory with a simple hairstyle that is all colored in a puristic white, resulting in a hairstyle that fully symbolized the 19th century colonialism by the white man. But I gotta say, that's one hell of a head that even makes the big G look minuscule in comparison. But I would be aware regarding the halo piece because if you happen to drop them, they happen to break very easily, so beware. Moving down to the face, look at me. LOOK AT ME! In proportion to the large head, Bandai gave this titular demon a huge face in which while all the details are there to show, they make even the Figma figures look like an android. But talking about details, if you're familiar with anime style SH Figos figures, they can either be a blessing or a curse, in which Paimon here crosses the line between both sides as the enormous eyes allow for the application of some intricate details such as the stars and lens flares applied to the eyes that would make even J.J. Abrams proud. But on the other hand, the skin is less white than I previously conceived Paimon to be to the rest of the head making Paimon emit an overly artificial aesthetic that is absent in their Figma counterparts. This is in addition to the two-dimensional mouth with the lackluster paint job that makes even American figures look lifelike in comparison. But if this smiling face is too kawaii for you, there are these alternative faces with the first being this monotone face, which with the reduction in pupil size and the intent filled pupil design, alongside the smile being replaced with a single line, exerts a sense of either disgust or pity when our beloved demon is looking over her non-white subjects. But if that brings too much historical trauma for you, there is this hostile face that this time around loses the dull eyes for an intent filled pair and the crossed eyebrows that perfectly suits Paimon when she's about to deliver vengeance and furious anger. Let's be honest, she ain't doing shit even with that face. But if you want the full levels of irritation by this titular gremlin, there is this smug face which succeeds in drawing out the set frustration that all Genshin players accumulated throughout their gameplay as portrayed through the half-open eyes that happen to be looking right and a smirking grin. And if you look closely, the face emits the Shinomiya Kaguya vibes. Looking down at the torso, Paimon, contrary to his simple hairstyle, possesses some drip as the intricate Genshin patterns are organically embedded with a fine paint job. This is in addition to the unique three-finger cape that is accompanied by most Genshin characters, with Paimon possessing a unique over-the-shoulder cape that covers the upper torso and half of the back, a style that stands completely opposed to those seen on her Genshin predecessor. I also can't go without mentioning the astral 
astrology patterns that decorate said cave, with them containing the map of the galaxy and maybe hints at her future <laughs> desire to rule such galaxy. Looking below... He was deceived by a lie, we all were. But that is one great ass! <laughs> But the legs fail to live up to that ass, as the thighs fail to contribute to those baby-bearing hips. <laughs> With the right one, unlike the left, with its exhibitionist nature, retains a pretty-looking stocking that tries to withhold what decency there is left. But it's the calves where the leg drip shines, as just like the arms retain the flower petal-like bronze design, which is followed by a white end all culminating in a white and bronze high heel shoe, which would be a pain in the back for Paimon, but due to her airborne nature, actually acts as grit. Now, regarding the average loadout that SH figures are provided, just like before, they can either be your angel or your devil, and considering the identity of Paimon's origins, just guess how it's gonna turn out. As Paimon being a non-terrestrial entity that happens to be airborne, it was obvious that Bandai would abide to the demon's characteristics. But unlike Figma figures that have a 3mm peg hole that you can shove something into, SH Figures figures lack such trait which makes their figures a hell to handle. But come and behold, Bandai this time around decided to add some extra spice into their company's stand with the base being more opaque compared to the run-of-the-mill Act 4 stand, alongside the MiHoYo logo at the bottom. But then there are these unique holding pieces that accompany the stand, in which by connecting this double-jointed piece to the stand, attaching to the base, attach this extension piece, connect either the standard clamp or this in-flight unique one that is suited for in-flight poses, in which you have Paimon in her iconic aerial mode that is perfect when Paimon is fighting <coughs> Bullshit! terrestrial hostiles, or when she's trailing fellow Genshin characters and testing the upper limits of their patience. But just in case... This is a truly great accessory. But besides the superb stand and the previously mentioned faces, there are the standard set of hands. Besides the out of the box open hands, there are these fists that due to the minuscule size of the ball joints is a hell to attach. And with the thumb sticking out, that makes it the perfect set when Paimon is cheering someone up, as you'll definitely not see her punching a dude with those flimsy arms. Then there are these full on open hands that with the drag resistant shape makes it the perfect hands when Paimon is required to double time in certain situations, or trying to reenact Will Smith. Now, if you've been a keen observer up to this point, you'll realize that this pesky demon is a midget, and a small one at that, in which when placed next to either fellow Genshin characters or to the perfect organism, is more or less a mobile womb that contributes to the ever-declining birth rate. Personal wishes aside, Paimon stands at a meager 10.5 centimeters minus the halo, or 3.7 inches tall. So, if you're looking for a big and guffy figure, you've chosen poorly. Unless you're a fan of children, then you're in luck. Here's Paimon next to Gumpla, fellow demons, fellow Genshin characters, and Kaijus. As a Japanese articulated figure, like your average Figma figure, it is easy to mistaken that the SH figure arts line could pull off similar levels of feats, but that is not the case as certain figure arts are equipped with less number of joints in which they make certain monsters look tame in comparison. And Paimon here, as the cheeky devil she is, is no different. The movement around the head due to the oversized hairpiece makes it nigh impossible. Torso movement is decent regarding side to side movement, but up and down movement is limited. Shoulder lift is pretty good for a girl of her size. Decent arm movement, elbows can bend up to 90 degrees, extremely poseable side movement, limited hand movement due to the lack of a separate waist piece. There's no waist movement. Leg spread is similar to that of a girl of her age. 
What the fuck? Leg movement is fair, but a side movement is nicely noted. Knees bend up to 90 degrees, and a decent feet movement. In which, there's only one thing I can say about his posability. And I've got to say, in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit that I have ever heard. So, regarding Bandai's first iteration of a Genshin character, I have to say that they did a decent job as Bandai truly did their research regarding the titular demonic entity, in which the sculpt and paint job plot are beautifully done, especially the various ornaments that Paimon has on her drip, alongside accessories that are accompanied with the base figure, such as the stand that aid in recreating Paimon's likeness as depicted in the game. But as light rises, so does the darkness to meet it in which this figure is plagued with the faults that followed the SH figure arts line from their inception, such as the mismatching skin that emits an inorganic aura, the limited range of posability, especially compared to the competitors, and the lack of any underpants. That the great from the greatness that this figure is able to reach, and further highlights the limitations that the SH figure arts line has when recreating anime based characters. With that out of the way, if you're a fan of the digital online gambling machine, demonic entities rendered in anime lolly styles, or underage minors, I would highly recommend this figure. But for people who have a life, I have to say that it's better to invest the money anywhere else than purchasing this figure. In doing so, I'm gonna give the SH Figures Paimon a ranking of a B.